Welcome back to another Morbid Mini episode. This is Tale of Two Dead Girls. I'm your host, Kayla. And I'm your host, Kale. This is the episode where we share your guys' stories. Um, You guys email us your experiences, your ghostly encounters, and reread them in this episode. Today we have two emails to share with you guys, um, and Kale's going first. All right, guys. Today, the story that I'm going to read to you is from a friend that I have. Her name is Abby. Uh, We went to school together uh, for dog grooming, and she told me she had a bunch of paranormal stories that happened to her and her family and that she does ghost hunts and stuff. So I convinced her to send us a little email. So this is where she says, hey, Kale, this is Abby from the school. I finally got all the stories I told you about from my family. First one is short, but it's from my husband. I will tell these stories as they were told to me from their point of view. Here's where it starts. When I was a little kid, I was living in my great grandma's basement with my family. It was and still is just my mom, dad, me, and my sister. One day I was sitting in front of the TV watching cartoons. My mom and sister were in the other room and my dad was at work for the day. Behind me, I saw a small figure that looked like my sister and I turned to her to ask where our mom was and the little girl smiled at me and slowly faded away. At the time, it didn't bother me. For some reason, I didn't feel any fear from the little girl or even really realize that it was a ghost that I saw. And I turned back to my show, not really making it as big of a deal. Oh my gosh. That's that creepy. is a big deal though. <laughs> yeah. Imagine you're just like a little kid and you're just like, oh well. And then you're older and you're like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. So this says, the next story is for my husband's aunt. The one, These ones aren't really that scary, but she still lives in the house. One day I was getting ready to head to work. While I was in my bedroom, I heard the clack of cowboy boots on the tile in the kitchen. I thought it was my grandpa, as he usually just kind of shows up randomly to check on me. When I walked out to the kitchen to say hi to him, I saw a man that I have only ever seen in pictures. The cowboy standing in my kitchen looked like a younger version of grandpa. I couldn't see his legs or arms. When I asked him what he was doing there, he gave me a soft smile and she heard, I'm here to protect you from the darkness, and then he vanished. This is back to me. After after this happened to her, she called me. Oh, okay, so this that was her aunt or her husband's aunt story and then this is Abby's story. So it says, "This is back to me. After this happened to her, she nodded to me. Oh my god, sorry. Hold on. I can't <laughs> read apparently." <laughs> okay. After this happened to her, she called me to her house and asked me what darkness the man had been referring to. I looked at my husband and asked him if I could tell her what had happened to me in her house in the basement. He nodded to me and I began to tell her the next story. When my husband and I were still dating, I went to the basement with my husband and his sister to play pool. As I was walking down the stairs, I saw a dark mass at the end of the hallway by the stairs. So me being the stupid, typical horror movie white girl that I am, I took (laughs) off running toward towards it determined to find out what it was when i got to the room i felt a sharp pain in the back of my head and i got three large scratches from the top of my neck to about halfway down my back i know it sounds fake i'm fully aware people probably won't believe me and that's completely fine i know what happened is and so does my husband when we told his aunt she started to cry she thought she thought that she was the only one that was afraid of the basement Ooh, that gave me goosebumps spooky you said that wasn't that scary, but that's pretty fucking scary. <laughs> yeah, and basements are always spooky. Like, if you're not oh, yeah. afraid of a basement, then something is wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, no, basements, cursed, always. All right, so the last thing says, this is another one of her stories. I sent you the picture from the story. So we'll post this picture um, on Instagram so you can follow us at Tale of Two Dead Girls. Uh, One day I was sitting in the front room with my sister and her husband. They had just helped me move my grandma into a home as she wasn't doing very well. It was February and we were sitting facing her chair and her doll collection when my sister's husband pulled out his phone and snapped a picture. When I asked what he was doing, he said that he saw someone there. When we looked at the picture, we saw a young woman in the space between the chair and the glass case. My grandma passed away exactly a month later. At this point, she showed me the picture and this is back to me. I had seen the woman before, so I asked if I could see one of the family photo albums, and I found the picture I was looking for. This isn't her, is it? Wait, this is her, isn't it? I asked, referring to the woman in the picture. The shock on my husband's aunt's face was really freaky, and when I asked her who it was, she told me it was her great-grandmother, the mother of the grandma who had passed away. Oof. That's so creepy. 
That is like just so crazy. I but would like find also that, comforting. Yeah, I would find that like fascinating. I feel like yeah, it's like that was her mom, and then she died like a week later. Is what it said something like that. Oh, a, a month later. So it's like her mom was coming to find her. Yeah. Wow. See, that's fascinating. I know. <laughs> <It's so laughs> and the pictures, the pictures freaky. Like you can definitely see it. So make sure you go check out our Instagram. We will have these pictures posted. Okay, so I have quite a few stories actually. So um, get yourself a snack if you haven't gotten one already. <laughs> um, but this one is titled Paranormal Activity. Ooh. <laughs> we got um we got nine incidents is what they have shared and also they have sent three photos that are pretty effing creepy so can't wait to share that yeah. with you guys so make sure you go check that out um extremely creepy as like, you're listening to this episode yeah yeah it's super super freaky, super freaky. like i usually don't get that scared at ghost pictures because i'm like nah this is fake but these pictures they are fucking scary. <laughs> like they, they look real as hell. Yeah. So I believe it. So let's uh, let's get into the story, shall we? All right. So incident one: the very first time that I had a paranormal experience, it was very negative. The house that I was staying in was not a very happy place. The father was an abusive alcoholic. My girlfriend at the time, it was her dad. Our mutual friend and I were all sleeping in the basement. My girlfriend and I took the bed and our, and our friend slept in the sleeping bag on the floor. One night, I woke up feeling scared for some reason. I didn't want to be awake in the first place. When I opened my eyes, I saw four non-corporeal figures hovering around the bed. I felt such incredible hatred coming from them. If I were to describe what they looked like, it would be a lot like the ring wraiths from Lord of the Rings. But the thing is, this was several years before the movies even came out. Oh, geez. They were glowing a light blue. They were definitely humanoid, but they didn't have faces. I didn't look very long because I was absolutely terrified. I called out to my friend on the floor, who was very close to the light switch. I asked her calmly to turn the lights on. They went away when the lights came on. My girlfriend woke up and I told the two of them what I saw. The next night, we all moved into the backyard in two separate tents. There were no more creepy spirits haunting us once we got out of that house. Oh my god! Oof. That reminds me of the time when I had. Oh, can you hear that? Yeah. Jeez, I hate this apartment. <laughs> um, but that reminds me of the time when I, I already shared this story with you guys. But I had like nightmares in my grandma's house, and then in the particular room that I was staying in, and then at, like every single night I had nightmares in there. And then when I like started sleeping in her room, I didn't have any more nightmares crazy yeah that's way creepy i don't know if you know what a ring wraith looks like but they're like they look like kind of like grim reaper like cloaked figure oh god no figurines i've actually never seen lord of the rings oh Um, it's pretty good but i i have but i fell asleep i gotta i gotta gotta try uh watch it again um but yeah okay so incident two After the first time that I saw those figures, I was absolutely terrified that all paranormal encounters would be that way. But then I met my ex-girlfriend, who I will call Linda. She was very much into all the paranormal things. We started watching a few ghost hunting shows, and she taught me about things more. She somehow convinced me to go to a cemetery to try to talk to spirits. I was hooked after that. One of the first experiences that I had with her was when she decided to bring some battery-powered candles that changed colors with the remote. The thing is, the remote didn't work. It was out of batteries and required special tiny batteries, but we could turn the candles on. They were stuck on the color red. So we put them on top of her SUV and set off to capture something with film or possibly an EVP. By that time, I had an EVP wrist recorder. Okay, cool. And was waiting for my SB7 spirit box from an online ghost hunting shop. Another purpose for the candles was to find the vehicle when we were done wandering. It wasn't that it was a huge cemetery, I would say about average, but there was something about that cemetery that tended to make us feel lost. It was complicated either way. Anyway, after an hour or so of wandering, we decided to head out for the night and listen to the recording I got, but when we looked for the red lights, they were not there. 
Instead, we found some flashing green light. We followed them to her SUV. The candles had been turned to green and switched to flashing. Okay, incident three. I, along with two other friends, was at a cemetery that I had been wanting to explore for a while. I had just downloaded an app on my phone that allowed words to show up, apparently spoken by spirits around me. I took out my phone and turned on the app. For the most part, the app seems to just say random words that have no meaning to them, but this time in particular, there were words appearing that had to do with the scenery around us. Sorry if you hear a bunch of dogs barking in the background. Anyways, a few words showed up about the landscape. I thought, huh, interesting. Then it said something about water, right before we came across a broken sprinkler that had flooded the area. One of my friends decided that she was not interested in it more in being at the cemetery, so my other friend and I bid her adieu and continued. At this time, the friend that stayed decided to take some pictures with Flash. She got a picture of what looked like a semi-transparent arm of someone running out of the frame. I have attached a picture. None of the people there were wearing white, so we have no explanation for this. That will be the first photo. Yeah, the first picture. I It does look kind of like an arm, like fleeing that's away what i thought something. too that's so yeah. weird okay incident four shortly after my mom died my girlfriend and i still linda at this point went to that cemetery a lot to try to contact my mom but it wasn't the cemetery that she finally contacted us the first time it was my living room linda and i were alone in near darkness and just talking to my mom she was recording with her phone unbeknownst to us she was replying to our words in intelligent ways We found this out when we listened to the recording. Linda had said, If you're here, we would love to talk to you. And then I heard as a loud whisper of sorts in a French accent, I'm here. I don't know how to do a French accent, so. Yeah, no, me neither. (laughs) (laughs) Then after Linda said something else, the loud whisper said my name that she gave me. It's not the name that I go by anymore, but it's the name that she gave me. It was said in that same French accent that my mom had. I cried when I heard this voice, knowing that it was her. She said something else a few seconds later, but I was unable to decipher what it was. No one else has either. Mm. Oh, I feel like if I heard my dad or my grandma's voice, I would literally just disintegrate. Like, I'd be so scared, but also, like, happy, but also sad. (laughs) It would be so weird. I feel like I'd be comforted knowing that they are around, you know? Yeah, that's true. Knowing that there's still something Yeah. Incident five. At the same cemetery that my mom is buried at, Linda and I would often go visit at night. Though we never heard from her at the cemetery, we occasionally heard from the other spirits. One night, we got a name, William. It's an old cemetery. There would probably be a lot of Williams on the headstones, but surprisingly, we searched for a good five minutes before we found one with the name William on it. I started taking pictures and I thought nothing of it, But then we heard some water. It was a strange thing to hear at a cemetery as there were no bodies of water close enough to be heard. So we searched for the source. We found it eventually. It was a spigot. It was gushing water. I walked around it, taking pictures. Then Linda said that she had to pee and wanted to leave. As she walked away, the spigot started spraying less. Wait, I called after Linda. Please just come back here for a moment. When she walked back over, the spigot started spraying heavily once again. Okay, now leave again, I say with a smile. She smiles back, knowing that I'm on to something, but not sure what. As she leaves, the spigot loses its luster once more. Come back, I called out. She obliges once more. I laugh as the spigot starts to gush once again. This time, she notices it and starts chuckling too. Later that night, as we are going over the pictures that we took, we find a very creepy figure. It is very close to William's grave and isn't quite corporeal. I have attached this one as well. Okay, yeah, that one is like a really spooky photo and it looks like an alien or something. Yeah, that one is freaky. Like, it literally looks like... I don't even know. It look it literally looks like a, it's like a bald head. Like it just looks like an alien with a cloak. But it's like it's serious. It's but it's like see through. Like you can see the no, bottom this is like totally, transparent. This totally looks like a freaking yeah, like a freaking extraterrestrial alien thing. Yeah, that's yeah. scary. <laughs> All right. Um we are on incident 6. 
One of the most intense and memorable times that I have spent at a cemetery was when I was with another ex-girlfriend. I will call her Voldemort <laughs> because that is who she reminds me of. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> What's she got against Potter? <laughs> <Just Jeez. kidding. laughs> anyway, <laughs> we are at the same cemetery that my mom is buried in. We start there with an app that I have open. She is taking pictures. I have always felt really safe around my mom's grave as if she was continuing to watch over me. Once we left the safety of my mom's grave, I started feeling uneasy. I have always been sensitive to others' feelings. And during my time paranormal investigating, I have learned that my sensitivity also extends to non-living beings. Anyway, we start walking through this small grove of trees. The trees are huge. I don't like this area. It makes me feel like I'm in danger. I try my best to walk through it, but I just end up creeping myself out after only about five minutes. I've had enough of this feeling, so I tell my girlfriend that I'm going to hang out with my mom. I pass through the side of the grove of trees, a place that doesn't feel as creepy to me. Suddenly, this giant evergreen tree that is at least the height of a three-story house starts swaying. I look around at the other trees and they are still. I look even further and realize that there is no wind whatsoever. Something is shaking this huge tree. It doesn't feel scary or ominous, just extremely supernatural. I make it to my mom's grave unscathed, but as my girlfriend is walking back to me, I get an intense, uneasy feeling come over me. I can almost hear my mom in my head telling me to get out of there, so I tell my girlfriend that I'm done and we leave. We head to my house and listen to the recording that I made with my wrist recorder. During the time that the trees are shaking in the cemetery, I can tell because I'm calling out to my girlfriend telling her that it's happening, there is a giggle on the recording. I know that I would have remembered hearing a giggle. It wasn't scary, like the feeling. It felt more playful than anything, like the spirit just wanted to play and was possibly a little girl. I know that demons can disguise themselves as children to the to seem harmless, but I can always sense what a spirit's intention is, and this felt like an actual little girl spirit. We were also fairly close to the children's section of the fem- the cemetery. <laughs> the cemetery. Children's section? They have a specific section of That's like, what I was thinking. Cemeteries? I, I don't think they have that at my cemeteries around here. Huh. Interesting. I wonder where this is. Like, I want to know what state this is. Um, I think this actually might be Washington, because the person that sent this... um. They, um, the, the, the Facebook group that I'm in, it's for like Washington witches. Oh, okay. So I think this is Washington because it makes sense. Like evergreens. Evergreens. Yeah. Evergreens that's tree. what I was thinking somewhere around there, but. <laughs> yeah. But I want to know. Yeah. I want to know what cemetery that is. But you want to um, go to the cemetery so you can see this fucking weird alien figure. <laughs> yeah. Wait, maybe I don't though. I don't no, know. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I not while you live alone yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) okay um but as we continued my blood ran cold i felt my heart stop right before i told my girlfriend that i wanted to leave i heard two separate voices different tones saying get out one voice sounded like a loud whisper just saying get out the other sounded downright fucking demonic it was gravely and deep it dominated the other voice and it felt really hostile it wasn't the first time that i dealt with something hostile and i it wasn't the last that's so creepy i don't know hearing recordings is just like especially if you like were there and then you didn't hear anything because like obviously you would have fucking heard like if if you would have been able to hear that you would have heard it but then yeah. not hearing it and then listening to it later and you, you just like feel I feel like you would just feel crazy. Oh yeah, for sure. Just being like how did I not hear this weird scary demonic voice saying get out like <laughs> incident 8. I would like to state for the record that I do not believe in the devil or satan, but I do believe that there are negative entities out there that can do a lot of harm to living creatures. I came in contact with one such entity at a cemetery. The first time that I was aware of its presence, I had two friends with me, Molly and Lisa. Molly can see things and Lisa is, well, skeptical even though we have both seen some shit. 
The three of us were in my car. Molly saw something large and dark near a certain headstone. Lisa and I looked and could see nothing out of the ordinary, but I did sense a negativity in that direction. I had my ghost hunting tools app, which just spelled out words and had this sensor radar thing that went from green to yellow to red. Red meant that there was something there and would usually spell out a word. It is a hit or miss really with this app, but occasionally it would say things that were too uncanny to dis- to dismiss as random or coincidence, which I don't believe in coincidences. Me either. Shortly after this dark figure appeared to my friend, the energy around us changed. Molly and Lisa were feeling scared seemingly out of nowhere. They were beginning to express feelings of discomfort and negative energy in regards to the dark figure. I, on the other hand, had a strange urge to get out of my car. This was not like me. I listened to the people I investigate with. If just one person wants to leave or feels like something is wrong, we leave. But instead of listening to them right away, I just I just got out of the fucking car. I can't tell you the reason that I did it. There was no logical reason for it. I opened the door and stepped out. My friends were like, what the fuck are you doing? And, and get back in the car. I stood there for a moment about to walk toward the place that Molly said the dark figure was. I'm fine. It's fine. I got this. I tell them. But I didn't. It felt like I was being led by something other than my own faculties. Then Molly shouted at me through the half-open window. Get in the car right now, she said sternly. This seemed to snap me out of it, whatever it was. As I got back into the car, Molly continues, We need to leave now. I shook my head, finally back in control of my own body again. I look at my phone with the app showing, the words, black mass showed on the screen. I got the chills. I very much took it as a gathering of people who believe in Satan. While I don't believe that people that worship Satan or the devil are are inherently bad, per se, they are just people who follow a different set of religious beliefs than I do. But there are also those that practice things in the name of Satan that are most definitely doing things that are both what most people find to be morally and legally wrong. That being said, I don't want to hear the word Satan while I'm investigating a place that feels like it has bad energy. So shortly after Molly, Lisa, and I received this thing saying Black Mass, we decide that we want to go back to the cemetery during the day to see if there is anything that can explain what she saw the night before. There is absolutely nothing. I am recording and have my app out. There is a section of trees behind the cemetery with a dirt road going through it. It is on a slight hill and the path forks part way up the hill. I feel the most terrifying energy coming from the area of the cemetery. It feels wrong and scary and I don't like it. So I make my way up the hill with Molly and Lisa trailing about 30 to 40 feet behind me. I start feeling sick to my stomach, which happens to me quite a bit when I'm investigating. That and headaches are common for me when I feel a presence. So I bend at the wrist, trying to t- trying to still my stomach. It doesn't pass completely, but it lessens, so I continue. I'm almost at the fork in the path, one leading into a very small grove of trees and the other leading farther up the hill past the trees. It doesn't really make sense to me why there would be a path to the left. There is barely any space inside this grove of trees to put anything, unless you're trying to hide something. My stomach gets worse, and I feel like I'm actually about to puke. Then the app says, Satan. Nope! I cry loudly, then turn around and start making my way back down. Or wait, sorry. (laughs) Making my way downtown. (laughs) Start start making my way quickly down the hill from from whence I came. I met Lisa and Molly, and they asked what happened. It said Satan, I reply, and continue walking. This is not like me, to just walk away from something. So they follow. But I thought you don't believe in Satan, Lisa comments. I don't, but some of the people that do are capable of scary things. I reply, honestly. I make my way slowly to my car to listen to the recording that I just made. I skip to the part that I start going up the hill, and I close my eyes to listen better, and there it is, a fucking voice saying Satan, right before the app says it. I feel validated, nauseated, and blown away. This is some of the most compelling evidence that I have ever gotten that paranormal shit exists and that my app isn't full of shit. I wish you could send us the recordings. If you you can, if you're listening to this and you can send us the recordings, I want to listen to them. (laughs) Incident 9. 
the last one. And also, this takes place on my birthday. Oh, Ooh. my God. <laughs> okay. September 1st, 2020. Two of my friends, Molly and Lisa again, and I decided that a full moon on a, on All Hallows' Eve would be the most incredible time to go to cemeteries and record with film and my wrist recorder. We start at the cemetery my mom is at. Then we go to another cemetery that's like 10 minutes away. Then we go to the creepy cemetery that we've had some serious shit go down at, the whole Satan business. We sit in my car for half an hour or so with my app on just asking if anyone wants to chat who we are, the usual. We start looking at the funeral home, which is right in front of the car, about 40 yards, 120 feet away from us. It was close enough to make out shapes in the windows. There were a few lights on inside, but in the background, not in the rooms the windows were in. There was a large window on the side of the waiting area section of the funeral home. I knew the layout of the interior because I was there earlier that year to help plan a funeral. There was a light in the hallway which cast shadows in the room. The windows were about 20 long and about 3 to 4 feet tall. They stood about 2 to 3 feet from the ground. We could see into the window but just barely. Then there was another window, a regular size window that was in the urn room. This is where they kept the urns. The window was definitely closed and there may have been a curtain but it is uncertain. I started examining the windows, both looking for anything strange. Then I noticed in the smaller window that there was a dark figure moving on the right side of the window. There was no light directly in this room, but the light in the hallway cast a little background lighting. It seemed as if there was a figure moving in the right side of the window. It took up the whole right side from top to bottom. It was right, It was hard to see at first, but once my eyes focused on it, I could see nothing else. It seemed to almost sway near the right side of the window. At first, I just thought it was a curtain or something but I looked closer and saw that the window was not one that could open at all. As I watched it, something else smaller started moving on the other side of the window. It seemed like it was interacting with the other figure on the right side of the window. It was trippy, but very cool. I got a video of it on my camera, but it was a creepy... Oh, (laughs) but it was a crappy camera and you couldn't see anything. Then all of a sudden, in the big window, a large figure flew across it and disappeared a little over halfway through the window. I know that I saw it. It looked like the shadow of a person bent forward a little, running really fast. But it went faster than anything that I've ever seen. A person could not move that fast, and then there was the fact that it disappeared completely right before my eyes. I have never hallucinated before, and I haven't seen anything weird like that since. Unfortunately, Molly and Lisa were so focused on the little window that they didn't see it. It's the one and only thing that I've seen that can't be explained by logic. Have fun with these. If you want any more information on these or have any questions, just let me know. Kyler. Dang. Thank you, Kyler. Those were some friggin' awesome stories. Yes. Definitely creepy. Definitely scary. I have some questions because I'm wondering the picture that you have with the little figure and it looks like there's a person in a brown jacket walking is that you? Is that your friend? But like, also, did they like not see this thing directly in front of them? Like, that's so weird. So weird. Because they're walking like directly in front of it. Ooh, spooky. I th- I'm pretty sure they have that a lot more too. So weird. Like that picture literally, it's so weird because like the first one, the first one like looks like a figure but then the second one like you could think like oh is that like one of those weird tall like headstones but like it literally looks translucent at the bottom that's what i thought the first time too but it yeah but it also does look like like it doesn't look like a headstone you can't see through a headstone yeah and it has like a face almost like it's just yeah it is the freakiest thing ever like i'm i'm obsessed that we have this Plus the headstone, like, that you can see right in front, like, they, they're, those are fucking old. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to our stories. Um, I think this is a little bit of a longer episode than usual, Um, but we would love to have longer Morbid Mini episodes um, if you guys uh, are interested and have stories that you want to share with us, um, please do that. Um, you can email them to uh, tale of two dead girls at gmail.com. Um, and don't forget to check our Instagram for the photos of today's episode that we were talking about. Super freaky stuff. You'll see an apparition. Um, 
and you guys can help figure out what it is or if you've seen anything like that before. Yeah, definitely. If you have any stories, we preach it all the time. But if you have any murder stories, paranormal stories, scary stories, creepy stories, alien stories, whatever you have, send it to us. We would love to read it. And especially if you have pictures, definitely send those pictures, recordings, videos, whatever you have. We want to see it all. (laughs) We want to see it all. (laughs) Well, thanks again for listening to today's episode. Um, We're going to go now. Uh, So stay tuned for the next episode. Bye. Bye.